Welcome to Solutions Rising. I'm Rachel Branch, and I am more than honored and delighted to welcome Elizabeth Allard with me today, and co-host along with me is her daughter, Christy Bastriani. And this is, for me, very special that both of these incredible women are here with me today as I begin my 11th year of Solutions Rising. And we're, of course, going to um, highlight, this program is called Listen and Believe, Rape Victims Who Have Survived. And um, every year, at, when I start the year, it's about always include one billion rising to stop rape. Rape is a weapon of war. And this year, um, one billion rising announces the 2023 theme and campaign, Rise for Freedom and Create the New Culture. And this is created by a community of 47 one billion rising coordinators located across the globe. This year's campaign will celebrate 10 years of One Billion Rising and urge communities worldwide to utilize art and activism, creative resistance, events and gatherings, both online and offline, to demand an end to violence against women, girls and the planet, and to shine a light on the rampant impunity and injustice that survivors must often face. And Christy and I, welcome to both of you. Thank Elizabeth you. Allard, may I call you Elizabeth? You may. Okay, uh, thank you. Uh, we're gonna talk about, both Christy and I, Christy has recently done a program with me called The Blame Game that had an exhibit at the United Nations about um, what were you wearing? And I was just incredibly, filled with gratitude that she told her own story without talking in the third person about somebody else. And we both told our stories and we're both survivors. But when she said maybe her mother would come on this program and talk about what it was like to have a daughter that was raped, and we're gonna tell that story. And Christy, will you tell me a little bit about your mother agreeing to come on this program? And uh. It didn't take much. <laughs> <laughs> she I just called said, her after I was done, and I said, guess what I just did? And I told, explained to her how I was on your show and the subject, and she said, good, I'm glad you, you're talking about it. So I said, well, you know, I had mentioned you and how, you know, what you went through and, and CORE and how you got involved with abused women afterwards and, um, and that you would asked if maybe she would come on the show, and she said, sure, absolutely. You didn't so. hesitate at all, did <laughs> no, you? No, not at Elizabeth. all, not at all. I, uh, before we were starting to tape this program, you were talking a little bit about a rape crisis center in North Adams. Now, this is early this was, 70s. It, yeah, probably mid to late 70s. Mm -hmm. um, that there was, and it was, it was small. It was, uh, there was a lot of, um, a number of Williams College students, and that were involved in it, and it just didn't last long. I think at that mm -hmm. time, for me, it was not possible to stay involved because my children were little, and I just, of course. I just couldn't that give up that first. time, and I was mm -hmm. working with two young children. But uh, they also then were absorbed into the Pittsfield mm -hmm. area. And yeah. there still is here, yes. there's, there's, there are. <clears throat> It just wasn't as involved. It wasn't. It wasn't as as big. Mm -hmm. um, and I guess you you I mean um, Pittsfield's a lot bigger, so th that makes sense. Yeah. yeah, but there there, there was and still is an office here, and I know you, yeah. there are restraining order well, possibilities and yes, um, I, I have been um, close to Elizabeth. Elizabeth, not Elizabeth. Um, Freeman Center. Yes, but I'm, I'm thinking of um, Liz Mitchell. Oh, right. <laughs> who was getting restrained. The other Elizabeth. The, the other, other Elizabeth. The other one. Yes, right. and, and she was really good about going right. to court with people. Did you do a little I of did that, that work too? I did that, but that was later on. That was um, later the, on. At, for, at, at the beginning, it was just because in the early 70s, there wasn't a lot. It was the beginning of the women's movement going, mm -hmm. no, we, we count. Yep. And no means no, and yep. all that. 
kind of thing, and it was especially in colleges a big deal mm -hmm. because they were often not, they were told not to get the local police involved, that it wasn't, mm -hmm. they wouldn't do the right thing, and you would much better to stay with the college. And of course, that wasn't true. It was good for the college. It wasn't necessarily good for the the and there are still colleges that are that, protecting that, are like that. that don't want you to go to the police. Right. And of course, it's interesting that you're talking about the early 70s because those were the horror years for me. Yeah. And there were no services at Not, all. No. And once one of the attacks was after a car accident and my head broke the windshield, my lip cut the steering wheel, I was driven out of town and driven back. My doctor was out of town. I went to his backup doctor and I went into the nurse because I was more afraid of my body. Would I get some kind of... Uh, disease and um, the nurse laughed at me. Yeah. Like here you're telling a nurse, a medical person, you've been attacked, you've been raped and and they're la she's laughing at me. And the, at that time you could not go to the police. Yeah. There were no services. Uh, I knew what shell shock was, but I had no idea uh, post-traumatic what they call post-traumatic stress disorder, which I call post-traumatic horror. Mm -hmm. uh, there wasn't even the term. Right. But, so then, Christy, when you were raped and attacked, and you would, I mean, t you went home and um, talked to your mother. Well, they had to come pick me up from the hospital. <laughs> <laughs> so they had to come. The hospital called them, and apparently it wasn't a very nice way either from what you said. Well, I got, I was sleeping, you know, this, I had the phone ring and I woke me up and I get on the phone and it's the emergency room saying, uh, and the nurse was very cautious and, and very kind, I must say. The North Adams mm -hmm. Hospital were, were wonderful. Um, they, the, the nurse said, I, uh, your daughter's been hurt. She, she's going to be fine, but you need to come down. And so that that's all I heard, and just then it was it was get your clothes on and get out of here and get to the hospital. When I got to the hospital, there was a uniformed police officer. There was two actually, mm -hmm. and I could hear Christy crying. It was in the middle of the night, and it was quiet there. There was not a mm -hmm. lot of people or anything, and I just knew. I just knew what happened. I could tell. Mm -hmm. By the way, they were not looking at me. They were <laughs> looking down. And I, I actually asked one of the officers if my daughter was raped. And they said yes. And then I said, I want to go in. And, they, and, and that was the problem. But they didn't understand. I wasn't taking no for an answer either. No, <laughs> after just meeting you, I'm I was quite sure going you would not in. take no for an answer. I was going in, and I could hear her crying. And I said, no, I, I need to go in. She needs to know that I'm here. And f finally, they okay, they brought me and they kind of knocked on the door. And, and I think the doctor and the nurse who were in there, and at that point, they were doing the rape kit. So that's mm -hmm. pretty invasive. Oh, yeah. That, you know, that, that's pretty traumatic. Yeah. And, and Christy was crying, but when she saw me, she goes, where have you been? <laughs> what took you so long? I don't remember. So I, <laughs> well, I remember the, the, the program we did. Um, the police... Christy had said that the police were very nice to her and the mm -hmm. people who uh, were the doctors at the hospital. Well, but I mean, my imagine, I mean, tough enough as a woman just to have a gynecological but this check. But, everything, this is, but they were so thorough. I mean, it, it, everything was explained to her. This is what we're mm -hmm. gonna do now. And mm -hmm. I was at her head saying, you didn't do anything wrong. Mm -hmm. oh. It's not your fault. Yep. yep. And over, over and over. Over and over. And then the lady from the rape crisis said I said the same thing. Yeah, yeah, and that that is so so important to those who survive right. to be have somebody right there to to that be knows. with you. You're not alone, but you knew you also. But I had background, you had so background. I knew that yep. any shows of anger are, are are so painful to to victims because they feel responsible for the anger, like mm -hmm. I'm. What, I, what happened to me is, it's, is hurting you, and it, they own that, and it's not right. It, it, you can't do that to a victim. That's just so not right. Mm -hmm. And so I just, that was my job after that, to make sure that whoever interacted with her, whatever their issue was, they can 
not bring it to the table. It has to. Did you, when you first went, before you were raising your children, did you get some kind of training for working with rape victim survivors? It, well, I read, I, there was all the books to read. Mm -hmm. Then when I went, afterward I did, yep. uh, when I went to Pittsfield and, and began working with them after Christie's yep. uh, episode, I, I then went with them because they didn't have a whole lot of services in Northern Berkshire. Oh, oh. See, and I didn't think anyone who, that was my, anybody who went through that shouldn't be in an emergency room alone. They should have someone there who knows the ropes, who can, mm -hmm. who can run interference and help. Even it's the family. Sometimes it's the families you need to calm down before they speak to a victim. I, I, I could look back now and say, I wish you had been my mother. <coughs> you know, my family got it. People, friends didn't get it, didn't understand. Well, they don't. They, they're they, embarrassed. They, it's, it's an embarrassing. It's yeah. not embarrassing. You didn't do anything wrong. Yeah, but nobody tells you that. Right. You know, they do if they're around me. Yeah, yeah, that's why I just said it would, it would have been lovely. But it, it's still going on. We know that the that's victims true. are still, still being attacked. It is getting probably somewhat better. But if you're that victim and, and you're alone, um, it depends upon who you come in contact right. with. And that's right. true. And, and because then, then it's fielding all of the blame the victims scenarios, the, mm -hmm. the questions that are, it's like, I remember, I don't even know who it was, who said, you know, well, what were you doing out? And I went, oh. because she's old enough to be out, mm -hmm. it's really okay. Yeah, that, well, yeah. walking home, because yeah. I didn't have a choice. <laughs> That's right. It's, Got locked up. It's not, it's not illegal to be out. Well, I remember um, the first time I <coughs> met um, Eve Ensler, who's mm -hmm. One Billion Rising, um, and wrote the Vagina Monologues, an American playwright. And she was up at um, North Shire Bookstore, um, Actually, he took it to a school. And it, you bought the book as the ticket, right. this book, that she's autographed twice right. for me, right. in the body of the world. And um, there were two teenage girls that were in prep school, and one of them said, well, I had been drinking. I said, that has nothing to do <laughs> with me. mean you deserve to no, be raped? No, no, it has anything. nothing to do with it. No. The self-blame, because there are no guidelines or, or guideposts that say no, that no. Well, I, you know, yeah. I, hopefully that, Hopefully, the, the, the medical, I think, and mm -hmm. the initial contact in an emergency room or whatever, there mm -hmm. are people there more trained yep. than they were, you know, 20 years or 30 years ago. Well, of course, too, when you see, you know, the Me Too movement. Yes, uh, and exactly. All these now that bubbling even, up of women and, and men who support them. And, uh, right. Uh, it, and it's, it's not changing. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. um, that wasn't, it wasn't a big change yet, though. When it mm -hmm. was, there were still people who were not, who didn't realize. And I remember one individual who I, he was just really was apologetic that what he said, mm -hmm. it was my turn to educate that that was really not okay to say that to someone who was mm -hmm. a victim. Yep because you're then putting the blame on them for being victimized. That's yeah. not okay. It was very interesting that Larry Parnas of the Berkshire Eagle did an article on me. And I didn't even know that one of the attacks, a guy that drove out, out of town, he's talking about kidnapping. I had never even thought about, well, of course I had been kidnapped. Of course I, you didn't, I didn't know. And you know, uh, after that article came out, it was very interesting. And of course, there you are again to see people come up and hug me. Are you okay? Are you okay? Right. And I, because they got weren't. educated, a little educated. Yes. That yeah, this um, is not okay. You to know, do that. I think, at least in my case, you live with it the rest of your life. You just you go on because you have to go on. But uh, well, I think that's the part of family that if you've got yeah. a family that can mm -hmm. back you and say, "Look, this is not your story. It's just a chapter." Yeah in your story that's all well the difference Not your whole in, life. in well in the two of our stories is that i didn't speak up till 41 years afterwards and but what sad. i learned and even talking with christy was i had no idea here i'm at the norman rockwell museum for freedoms forum on gun control and i thought it was appropriate if i'd speak up and i spoke up 
I never knew that would be part of a healing because all of a sudden, every week, a rape victim survivor would come up to me and tell me. Their story. And I realized, my goodness, part of not being alone exactly. and being a comfort to each other. Well, and I think you, you are the only one that can say, I know what you feel like. I oh, know yes, what happened. Yes, yes. Right. And that's so important. Well, how do you know that? How did again, you know I, that? <laughs> but again, I mean, I, first of all, I'm a reader of books. Yes, so <laughs> so, my, so yeah. it, when it became, there were, there were not a lot of them out, but there were enough that you got some education. Mm -hmm. And certainly further down the road, there were more. They, they've yep. come up more mm -hmm. and more. But um, so I did have some elementary training but also it appears that the woman that you are, the compassion and the love and the caring. And, well, and that was my baby. You bet, that was your baby. Ian, uh, <laughs> no. you must have been enraged. I mean, and how? And that was the biggest thing. I that was, was for all my whole family because her brother, her older brother wanted to kill. Sure. And I said, but you can't, you can't do that in front of her because she will feel responsible for your anger and, and it's not that. fair, it's a burden. To, to victims to be responsible if you're dad and mom and whatever. Mm -hmm. So I said, you know, when she's not around, you can go, I don't know, kick the wall. I don't care what you do. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Throw yep. something, but don't do it in front of your sister. I because mean, it was, it was, it's very just shocking to a victim, I think, to see rage after you've already been mm -hmm. in that mm -hmm. situation and I'm saying I'm looking at you going you were there but if you heard someone being incredibly angry after the event mm -hmm. you would be uh, further well, victimized yes yes further yeah. victimized. and that's I think something that this program is bring, being up bringing up which is coming right from you um, further victimization we've done the blame game and right. you know what we're wearing but that's this program is going to be it's going to be called listen and believe right there you and, go yes listen and believe well believe. and then she had i think there was a her attorney a ada the district attorney that mm -hmm. that handled the case for christie it was a young man called Tim Chagru. Yes, and we know who he is now. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? Yes. And he, he was, was a shark. amazing. He was amazing. He was young and amazing. He handled her yes. so well and although mm -hmm. frightened. And that's another thing with a lot of people. And I think if you can do it, you need to go to court. Oh, yes. I think, I think just knowing that someone is behind bars and it doesn't always happen. And oh, in no, our, the percentages in this, of convictions are horrible. Right, but and, we, were, we were, this problem was, this was a, a, a stranger, dra dragged her off the street. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So it was actually kidnapping, that's what they were charged with. Yeah. The sexual assault and kidnapping, so that's what made the, mm -hmm. and they were caught because they're lovely old elderly ladies who were. It's amazing to it, me. The whole thing was. Uh, yeah. You know, if you could have a good news on something bad, that was it. Is that mm -hmm. there was someone there going this way? You need to go. They're they're not there. They stayed on the phone, saying, "Tell them to go left." They're not far enough. That kind of thing to to get her um, rescued at that point. And the, and the people at the time, right at the scene, were were um, arrested. So that it's was, interesting that I did two part show when. Uh, Tim Chagru was running for uh, candidate for district attorney, and now district attorney Chagru and I told him uh, about that I was doing a program on this. He said, I'm the attorney who prosecuted that case. Yes. And I sent him the link to our program. Yeah. And he's and he been very fabulous. involved, and of course, one of the founders of the Kids Place, and yeah. very involved in, in prosecuting sexual abuse, and very, yeah. very um, dedicated to that work. He, he, he was gets amazing. It. Yeah, he, he was amazing. It. He Right along, all, yep. all, all through it, he was amazing. Yep. Yep. And, and uh, you know, just everything that she needed to know, he just went through with time and again. And she's, I remember one sentence, he said, let's get them. We gotta get them. Because mm -hmm. at first, she wasn't really, the idea of a court is pretty daunting. Scary. 
So you didn't really want to do it at first. I, I don't blame her. And and I, you know, they, when I was working with the Rape Crisis Center at the, later on, they, that was their thing, was like, you shouldn't push them. I'm a little, I'm on the fence on that because I really think that if you know that there were some consequences. It helps healing. Someone I, I, faced, someone had had to pay the piper. Mm -hmm. it, it's healing. It's a little healing. Yeah, they're not still out there. They're not you still out there. You don't have to them. look over your shoulder. They're behind bars. When you, the two of you, would you talk a little bit about when you went to court? Uh, uh, I mean, sure. I, I, I'm just awestruck that both of you did this, and I know how important it is, and conviction rates are so low for rape right. victim survivors, and, and I just, I mean, I was stunned. And of course, I found out about Christy because I started talking about, you know, <laughs> that's how we became friends when yeah. I was doing my hair, and I was on the McCann School Committee, and so I'm in cosmetology, and I'm like <laughs> telling her my story. And this is another one. Every time I opened up, Somebody else would tell me, and she told me, yeah. and she told me she went to court, and then she told me they went away, and I mean, I was dumbfounded. Yeah, because it, it doesn't, but, but again, this was, this was pretty big news in North Adams, because these were strangers, and it, it's not, I mean, if you're in the city, it's not uncommon, yeah. but in a small yeah. towns, for, to, for a, a, a young woman to be kind of dragged off the street is not a common oh, thing. No, it does, no. So it, it, pretty, it was pretty sensational. It was in the papers numbers of Not times. Not my name, but. No, no, yeah. obviously, <clears throat> but um, yeah, so it, it became, and so then it became the, the, the local police who were just amazing. Um, uh, that, that's wonderful. Uh, wanted to see them, wanted to see them uh, put away. Yeah. They were mm -hmm. really good with her also, don't you think? Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, they were great. They were. How long did the court case end? Oh. Last was it a week or two? Or did it? Oh gosh, no. A no, week? It, it was, was a week. Maybe? A week. Yeah, maybe. Mm -hmm. Even if that, um, it was. You have to. You know, I was not. Shielda, <laughs> I picked out her what she went to wear. I said <laughs> Good. that the jury or people. And people oh, yeah. still have somewhere in there, even though they say they don't have any prejudices, there's stuff that floats around. So I picked out something that sort of looked one step like above a Catholic, a Catholic school, girl. school girl's <laughs> uniform. <laughs> a little white collar. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Little she hated cross. it. Oh, yeah. She's like, I'm not wearing that. I said, I, yeah. yes, you, you are. You are absolutely right. You're not <laughs> Appearance <laughs> does matter. Perception matters, said, especially you, with jury. You don't have to wear um, knee socks, but you can... <laughs> Everything yeah. else stays. So it was just little, it's little things, you know, that you have yeah. to think of. I said, no, that huh? they are people. People don't think. But if you, if you went in there and because, and you know that that's true, mm -hmm. dressed, and it shouldn't make a difference, but it does. Yep. It you know, does. if you had a, a, a low V neck mm -hmm. and you know, your short skirt. Short skirt. What we were talking stuff, about. Right. What were you wearing? It, it, right. it was on our and that's your fault then. Oh, yeah. And, that's and the two of fault. us, each of us told what we were wearing with this United Nations exhibit going on. It's like yesterday. You, it's like, oh, my goodness. You remember every detail. Mm -hmm. Well, I, re I remember telling her, I don't care. You could have done, be doing cartwheels down Main Street naked mm -hmm. and you didn't deserve to be raped. Yeah. Arrested, maybe, but not. Yeah. Right. <laughs> That's so were you just on, what happened. Were you on the stand for long? Did they keep you on for a long I time? didn't see her on the stand. They kept me away. Yeah. I, they oh, didn't yeah. want me to be. Um, no, she saw me. Not, I, I saw her. Yeah. I told you that. More I than saw an her. hour? Yeah. You saw your, I think you told me you saw your it mother was, crying. Yeah, I, kept, I was that really was, nervous. I was really nervous. Of course. Um, when she was tested, because I couldn't be down there, but I was pacing because it was going on, it, so it did go on. It didn't last for that long because I was crying. <laughs> they were, they had a hard time, you know, like just bringing everything up and the guy was there. Yeah, both, yeah. But they were both there, but, well, no, the one that was on trial was there. The yeah. other one was in jail because yeah. he had Co pled he guilty had for guilty. a lesser sentence. Right. Oh, one of them pled guilty. One pled. The one that actually attacked me and dragged yeah. me. The other yeah. one was his brother who was waiting on the side of the building, <clears throat> which I didn't know at the time, and he 
like I said, didn't think he did anything wrong, so he wanted to go to trial. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, the perception of the, well, those yeah, are yeah. war stories. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I, here we are coming to the end, and um, I, I just can't thank you enough. I, re I really moved uh, almost to tears to think that the two of you would come and do a program with me like this, and I certainly, at any time I can do a program that helps anybody who suffered, you know, you know, we start with the children and the women and the girls are the most vulnerable. And these are hard times for a all whole of lot of right people now. right now. Oh, that yes, is very, very, very hard, hard time. Times. So I'm going to just, as we wind up the program, if you'd like to make one more comment, I've got a little bit of what One Billion Rising, if you'd like to, a last word, uh, go right well, ahead. Well, you know, I, I just want, if, if there's anyone out there listening, call, call someone. There's help out there now. You don't mm -hmm. have to be alone. Oh, yes, yeah. help. Yeah. And my email's at the end of this program. You can email me and I'll talk to you or I'll, you know. Mm -hmm. they, it, we will find ways for assistance. Thank you, Absolutely. Elizabeth Allard. Oh, I'm really, really grateful. Having... And Christy Mastriani. Gosh, Always a pleasure. what gifts you are in my life. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. And from One Billion Rising this year, like the Earth, that is nearing a calamitous end. Right now, women, girls, and those impacted by gender-based violence are in a state of emergency. That's why we will not stop rising until all people are free from gender-based violence. It is time to create the new culture, a culture where we collectively share in commitment to end violence towards women, gender non-conforming and gender expansive people, end violence towards the earth, dismantle patriarchy, and I add to that, and women that support it. Cultivate care, community, trust, and compassion. Uphold cooperation rather than competition. Refuse outright the inequality of wealth. Place people over profit. Actively listen, know, and believe Make sure you believe. Know our true history. Make apologies and reparations. Honor the artists, visionaries, seekers, storytellers, shamans, shamans, poets, healers. Celebrate diversity. Embrace collective energy. Practice solidarity. Embody the power of art and dance. And 2023 will be the year of inspiration and aspiration. A year of storytelling, building communities, strengthening solidarity, sharing dreams, planting trees, creating art, honoring women and the earth, and of dancing. And of course, Elizabeth Allard and Christy Mastriani and the three of us have just created one of the ways and to show our activism and commitment to stopping rape and rape as a wef weapon of war. And if each one of us picked up one problem and solved it, Imagine the incredible view we would all have of solutions rising. Please be part of the solution. Thank you.